to make an adorable kid's apron pattern. Don't have a toddler in your life? That's fine. You can also do the child size or the youth size, which is basically an adult size small. So go get your pattern, gather your fabric, your ribbon, and your other supplies, and let's get sewing. Hey, I'm Jessie from Bell by Jessie, and today we're going to make a kid's apron. The first thing you need to do is go to the website and download your pattern. That's Bell by Jessie. There's an extra E on the Bell, not on the Jessie. You have three sizes to choose from, toddler, child, or youth. And today we're going to make the straight body pattern. There's also a ruffle version in another video, so that's an option as well. So pick which size you want, get your pattern pieces, and let's put it together. Now, there's a lot of information on the pattern pieces. I'm going to make the toddler size today. Don't get overwhelmed by this. Most of this instruction is just to make sure we get the pattern pieces assembled back together. They have to get cut apart so they fit on an 8.5 by 11 sheet. So all we have to do now is use these markings to put it back together. So we don't need the ruffle piece. We just need our body pieces and our pocket piece. So get your body pieces, trim around the edges, and then I'm going to show you how to match them up together and take them so you'll have one body pattern piece. Our pocket we can just set to the side for now. You want to find all your body pieces and in these um, sort of grayed out lighter colored letters each body pattern piece has a letter for it. So my toddler size only has three pieces. If you're making the child size there's an extra piece. If you're making the youth size it's a little bit wider also. So there are, I believe, seven pieces. Each one has a letter, and where the parts match together, you'll have a match line, which tells you the two letters that you're matching together. It will be a dashed line. There will also be a little shape, and the shape will match together once you get those lines together and lined up correctly. So again, don't let this be overwhelming or intimidating. Most of this is just to make sure that we don't have to think too hard to put this pattern back together to make one body to cut out our piece of fabric. So take a look at those and then line up those dashed lines with the shape, with the match line, letter instructions, and tape it together. All right, so my toddler apron now has one body piece. You can see those lines and those shapes just help to make sure everything's lined up together. Our instructions do have a grain line, which is a little bit redundant because this is a symmetrical piece that we are going to cut on the fold. I guess not always, but typically our fold line does line up with our grain line. I'll show you that in just a second. We don't need the ruffle, so we don't need to follow these instructions down here. The Big words tell us the size, and we've got our ribbon instructions on here that we'll refer to when we get ready to sew the ribbons onto our apron. So otherwise, all we need right now is to know that this goes on the fold. So you are ready to get your fabric out. And you have a basic cutting layout in your instructions, but I'm going to show you how I like to do it to save fabric. I used to work as a production pattern maker, but I was also a marker maker. And a marker in the production world is the cutting layout. So I would create the cutting layout for the factory. And the goal, of course, is to be absolutely as efficient as possible. Typically in the 95% range. That means with my rectangle piece of fabric, however long it was, however many layers were stacked up, we were cutting 95% of that fabric into usable pieces 
that we're going to be sewn together. We can't always be quite that efficient at home, but we can be as efficient as possible, especially with something that's not as wide as our fabric is. So, when we sew at home, we have a tendency to fold our fabric in half and put our selvages together so that we have two ply here and we have a fold line way over here on the edge. But I don't want you to cut it out like that because look, if I put my pattern piece way over there, can you even see it? Look at all of this fabric that's now gonna be cut in two pieces. You could use that for something, but how about let's try to get all this extra fabric into one piece so we can use a little bit more efficiently. So what we're gonna do instead is open up our fabric and we're gonna fold it over just a little bit. Now, obviously, if you're making the youth size or the child size, you're gonna have a wider piece of fabric and, I mean, a longer piece of fabric and you're gonna fold it over a little bit wider. This works the same for all the sizes. We're gonna fold it over. I'm gonna put my pattern piece here so that I can make sure I've got enough. And what I'm gonna do right here is take my pocket, which does have a grain line, so we don't wanna put this crooked. It'll make our pocket kind of sag a little bit. But I wanna make sure I've got enough folded over here that I'm gonna be able to cut my pocket out of this little extra section where my armhole is. All right, that looks straight to me, but to make sure that I'm on grain and I have it straight, I'm gonna get my tape measure. And I'm just going to measure from the selvage to the fold here. And then I'm going to measure to the selvage to the fold here. Adjust it just a little bit. If those two measurements are the same, guess what? You've got yourself a straight line and you're on grain. So now you can line up your pattern piece where it says place on fold. Those arrows are pointing right to the fold, so line it up with the fold. You can, of course, pin it. Another little trick I like to use because in a production setting, we would never pin our pattern down. That takes too long. So I like to use a weight. They do sell pattern weights specifically for this, but something that's a little easier for most of us to find at a thrift store or flea market or something is an old iron. These things are very heavy. You do want to make sure you find one that's smooth on the bottom so it doesn't snag your fabric or rip your pattern. But this is heavy and it's got a nice little handle. You can set that or anything heavy or tape dispenser works too, books, anything you've got laying around that's heavy. You can set that on top of your pattern piece. It'll hold it in place while you trim around. We don't have any notches on this straight body pattern. So I'm going to cut out my body and then with my little extra piece right here, because I only need one, I'm going to use that to cut out my pocket. got my body and my pocket cut out. That's all I need for this straight body apron plus my ribbons. I've got a little bit of scrap, but now instead of having two chunks of fabric left, I have a much bigger piece. You can use this for another project or you can make a gift bag to go with your apron if you're making it for a gift. Go check out some of my other videos and some of my other patterns to see how to make a fabric gift bag. All right. But let's get our pattern pieces, our ribbon, and let's head over to the sewing machine and put this together. The first thing we're going to do is prepare our pockets. So if you have a serger, I always recommend serging. We want to finish all the edges of the pocket. If you don't have a serger, you're going to get your pinking shears and just trim, pink the edge of this so that it will not ravel, or at least not as much. Now we're going to fold down the top and stitch along each edge about a half an inch. Our top's folded down about one inch.
clip the corners, trim those loose threads, and then turn it right side out. You can poke the pocket, the corner of those pockets out. And yes, I always use my scissors to do it. And now we're going to hem across. Take this to the ironing board. We're going to press all these edges in. So we have our edges pressed under, our pocket is ready to attach, and you'll notice your instructions are for both the straight body and the ruffle. The ruffle parts are in gray, we're just going to skip those while we're making the straight body apron. On your pattern piece, you do have a um, marking for where the pocket goes, but I actually prefer to just eyeball it and see what looks like a nice spot. So I'm going to put it kind of in the middle of the belly area, sort of in between the side seam and center. I'm going to put a few pins in here, not too close to the edge, so that I can leave the pins in while I'm stitching and make sure my pocket doesn't shift. Now, when we sew the pocket on, we want to make this beautiful little triangle reinforcement on the corner. And you're going to do this in one stitch. You're going to go down, come out, across the top, then all the way around the edge, across the top here, and back down to make those triangle corners. We've got our pocket on with a nice little reinforcement stitch on both sides. Now we're going to hem the armholes. So what we're going to do is fold it over twice. So we're going to fold a little narrow fold and then we're going to fold it again. And this is a little roll hem. This is the same thing you would see on the tail of a dress shirt. So with that curve, your fabric is going to give you a little bit of give and stretch because you're kind of going along the bias. So you can pin it all the way around. I have learned that I do better just to fold it and sew as I go. So that's what I'm going to do. So we've got our nice armholes finished, and now we're going to do our neckline. So we're going to get our ribbon on your pattern. It tells you how long to cut it. And I'm going to show you a little trick. We want, if we cut the ends of our ribbon straight, they're going to ravel, so it's better to cut at an angle. So what I'm going to do is measure how long mine need to be. And at that spot, instead of cutting straight across, I'm going to cut at an angle. I've already got my angle, which will reduce, greatly reduce the raveling. I'm going to put those two angles together. Now my two neck pieces are the same, and I'm ready to attach them to my body. What we're going to do first is take those two ribbons, and we're going to stitch them across right on the edges of the neckline. We're going to do that same little hem here where we turn it under and then we turn it under again. Only difference is now you've got your ribbon tucked up in there so it'll be extra secure.
on the right side of your apron you're just going to pull these ribbons back out and so they don't flop around we're going to top stitch right across here to hold our ribbon up against the body fabric all the way to the edge We're gonna do the same thing with the rest of our ribbon for the waist ties and hem, the sides and the bottom of our apron. So you can cut your ribbon according to the measurement. You'll have a couple in inches extra or to just go ahead and use all this, you can fold it in half, make you a pinch, make you a little fold there that you can see. Open it up, stitch it at an angle and there you go, you've got just a little bit extra, but that'll be all right. We're gonna do the same thing here and stitch that flat end of our ribbon against the raw edge on the side of our apron. Now on your directions, I have you hem the sides and then come back and hem the bottom. And that's totally fine. If you are able to use an attachment to do that, that would work the best. But I'm gonna show you a way I do it continuously all the way around. When I get close to the corner down here, I'm gonna stop and I'm gonna go ahead and fold up the corner with that small narrow double fold for that rolled hem so I have a lot folded up right here in the corner. So I may want to use my hand wheel to roll up on top of that. Get my needle down into all those folded up parts. Get a few inches of this ready. If you want to backtrack a little bit, you can. Or you can just hand wheel roll that off. And now I'm already on to my next edge. And I can keep going with this hem without starting and stopping again. So you can see it here on the outside, it just makes a corner. Just like on our neckline, we're gonna take our ribbon and we're gonna top stitch it so it's attached to the fabric all the way up to the edge. There we go. An adorable ready-to-wear apron. I had so much fun sewing the kids apron with you today. I hope you enjoyed it as well. Don't forget you can also make a ruffled version. Check out the video for that one. Also visit my shop to see more DIY patterns and ideas or to shop for ready-made ready-to-ship items for those times when you're just too busy to DIY. You can find me everywhere online at Bell by Jessie. There's an extra E on the bell, not on the Jessie. And also like and subscribe. Yeah, so like and subscribe. Thanks, boys.